They left behind massive cities, planned with mathematical precision. Monuments aligned with the stars, advanced sewage systems that rival modern design, and a language that has defied every attempt at decoding. This was no ordinary ancient people. They were the Dravidians, a civilization older than Rome, older than Greece, perhaps even older than Egypt. For centuries, scholars debated their origin. Were they native to the Indian subcontinent or migrants from a distant land? Were they a lost branch of the Sumerians or survivors of a forgotten kingdom swallowed by time? But no answer ever satisfied. Only more questions. Until now. A single strand of ancient DNA, unearthed in the blistering heat of an Indian burial site, has begun to rewrite the entire history of South Asia. Its code, locked for over 4,000 years, has just been broken. And what it reveals is nothing short of shocking. Could the Dravidians be the missing link between East and West? Are their roots buried not just in India? but far beyond its borders? Tonight, we unravel a genetic mystery that could change everything we thought we knew about ancient India. This is not just history. This is a scientific revelation. What does ancient DNA truly reveal about the real roots of the Dravidian people? Nearly 5,000 years ago, along the fertile plains of the Indus River, rose a civilization so advanced that archaeologists were stunned by what they found. Massive urban centers like Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa flourished with grid-like streets, multi-storied homes, public granaries, and even complex water drainage systems, features that wouldn't reappear in other parts of the world for millennia. And yet, these cities belong to a people whose language remains undeciphered whose script baffles even the most skilled epigraphers, and whose origins have remained a shadow on the map of human history. These were the ancestors of what many now call the Dravidian people. Predominantly found today in southern India, the Dravidian languages, Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, and Malayalam, are spoken by over 200 million people. But how did their ancestors get there? Were the Dravidians the original inhabitants of the subcontinent, pushed south by the arrival of Indo-Aryan groups? Or did they come from the west, bearing knowledge, culture, and technology from long-lost regions? The debate has raged for over a century, igniting political, cultural, and scientific controversies. Some theories trace them to ancient Elamites of Iran, others to the Sumerians of Mesopotamia, or even to African coastal migrants. None of these claims were ever conclusive until the arrival of genetic science. With the development of ancient DNA sequencing, researchers finally had a tool powerful enough to bypass myths, politics, and speculation. They could now read the story written in the bones themselves. Every fragment of DNA became a clue in a grand puzzle, linking populations, migrations, and forgotten bloodlines. But would these genetic trails confirm what history books had guessed, or destroy long-held assumptions entirely? The mystery had never been more urgent, or more massive. A civilization spread across 1.5 million square kilometers, older than China's dynasties, with trade networks reaching Mesopotamia and Central Asia, suddenly stood on the brink of scientific exposure. And the first cracks in the genetic code were about to be revealed. The breakthrough began not in a grand palace or forgotten temple, but in a dry, sun-scorched patch of land in the Indian state of Haryana. There, in the ancient ruins of a site known as Rakigarhi, one of the largest Indus Valley cities ever unearthed. Archaeologists uncovered a burial unlike any they had seen before. Inside a simple grave, wrapped in the silence of centuries, lay the skeleton of a young woman. Her bones, remarkably well-preserved, had rested untouched for over 4,500 years. 
But it wasn't the artifacts around her that caught the scientists' attention. It was what she carried inside her. Fragments of DNA, still locked within the porous structure of her petrous bone, the densest bone in the human body. Ancient DNA, especially in hot climates like India, is incredibly rare. Time, humidity, and heat destroy genetic material faster than in colder regions like Siberia or Scandinavia. For years, experts believed it would be impossible to retrieve viable genetic code from South Asia's ancient dead. But here, against all odds, lay the exception. And this one woman, silent, nameless, long forgotten, was about to become the most important witness in the history of Indian archaeology. Carefully extracted and shipped to the most advanced genetic laboratories in South Korea and the United States, her DNA was treated with reverence and precision. It was scanned, sequenced, and reconstructed, strand by strand. What would it reveal? Was she a descendant of early Iranian farmers, as some scholars proposed? Or was her ancestry linked to indigenous hunter-gatherers of the subcontinent? Every data point brought them closer to a truth buried under layers of myth, nationalism, and historical speculation. And then, something unexpected emerged. Her DNA lacked any trace of steppe ancestry the genetic signature associated with Indo-Aryan migration theories. Instead, it pointed somewhere else entirely, to a deeper, older root system. The first clue had surfaced, and it would soon explode into a full-blown investigation. With the ancient DNA extracted from the Rakigari skeleton, a global collaboration of geneticists, archaeologists, and anthropologists launched a full-scale investigation. At the core of this effort was a question that had haunted the Indian subcontinent for over a century. Who were the original builders of the Indus Valley civilization? To answer it, the team compared the woman's DNA to hundreds of ancient genomes from across Eurasia. Samples from Iran, Central Asia, the Zagros Mountains, and even the Caucasus. Every sequence Every genetic marker was a thread, and slowly, the team began weaving a tapestry of ancestry, migration, and forgotten kinship. But the journey wasn't smooth. The Rakigari find, although monumental, faced immense resistance, both technical and political. In a nation where history is deeply tied to identity, the implications of DNA evidence could upend long-accepted narratives. There were delays, controversies, accusations of foreign interference. Some claimed the research was rewriting history through a Western lens. Others feared it would rekindle ancient divisions. But the scientists pressed on, guided only by the data, not the debate. In pristine labs lit by cold fluorescence, genomes were dissected. One by one, the alleles were compared to those of contemporary South Asian populations and ancient remains from Mesopotamia, Bactria, and even the distant steppes of Eurasia. What they found was astonishing. The Rakigari woman carried a genetic signature distinct from the Indo-European groups that would later dominate the north of India. Instead, her DNA showed strong affinity with ancient Iranian agriculturalists and indigenous South Asian hunter-gatherers. But more striking was the absence. No markers from the Yamnaya or steppe pastoralist groups, long assumed to be key players in the shaping of Indian ancestry. This opened a new front in the investigation. Was the Dravidian heritage rooted in this blend of Iranian and indigenous genes? And if so, where did the linguistic and cultural links beyond India come from? The questions multiplied, and the data kept pointing in one direction, south. Toward the roots of the Dravidian language family, and perhaps its true point of origin. The sequencing was complete. Tens of thousands of genetic markers had been analyzed, compared, cross-referenced, and peer-reviewed. What the data revealed was nothing short of revolutionary. 
The genome of the Rakigari woman showed a near-perfect blend between two ancient populations, one rooted in the subcontinent's own Mesolithic hunter-gatherers and the other in early Iranian agriculturalists who migrated eastward long before the rise of Indo-European movements. This genetic mixture, formed thousands of years before any steppe migration, matched a specific pattern, a pattern that still exists today, most dominantly among modern Dravidian-speaking populations. The conclusion was unavoidable. The genetic foundation of the Indus Valley civilization, and by extension the proto-Dravidian peoples, was laid down long before the arrival of Aryan groups from the north. The Dravidians were not displaced outsiders. They were the inheritors of the land, the builders of the first great South Asian cities, and possibly one of the world's oldest continuous cultures. And this revelation came not from legend or linguistic speculation, but from the unambiguous testimony of DNA. Even more striking was the genetic silence on the Y chromosome side. No trace of the R1A1 gene, commonly associated with Indo-European male ancestry, appeared in the ancient sample. This further confirmed that the Dravidian roots lay in a pre-Indo-European epoch, a time when agriculture, trade, and urban planning were flourishing in the Indus Valley under a unique cultural paradigm. Then came a second bombshell. When researchers expanded their data set, to include ancient Elamite remains from Iran, another early civilization with unclear linguistic links, they noticed something uncanny. Genetic and linguistic traces that mirrored those of Dravidian populations. Could it be that the Proto-Elamite and Proto-Dravidian peoples shared a common origin? If so, it would place the roots of the Dravidian identity in a vast cultural network stretching from southwestern Iran to the Indian subcontinent. The discovery shattered old narratives. It also reignited a bold theory that the Dravidian identity may be part of a now lost pre-Indo-European civilization stretching across two continents. Imagine a world before borders, before empires, before even the first pyramids were built. Along the lush valleys of the Indus and the arid plateaus of ancient Iran, two worlds began to merge. Millennia before Sanskrit was spoken or Vedic hymns were sung, small communities of early agriculturalists moved eastward from the Iranian plateau. They brought seeds of wheat and barley, knowledge of irrigation, domesticated cattle, and something more elusive, ideas, rituals, and language. As they entered the subcontinent, they encountered bands of native hunter-gatherers who had lived in the region since the end of the last Ice Age. What followed was not conquest, but fusion. Over generations, these two groups formed a new society, sophisticated, urban, and remarkably advanced for its time. They settled near rivers, engineered massive reservoirs, and built cities that stunned future archaeologists. Their script, still undeciphered, was stamped onto seals and pottery. Their merchants traveled as far as Mesopotamia, carrying precious goods and perhaps stories of their homeland. This was the Indus Valley Civilization, known to its people not by that name, but perhaps as Meluha, the land mentioned in Sumerian tablets. As centuries passed, the culture solidified, the cities expanded and the language that would eventually evolve into the Dravidian family spread like roots through the land. It was spoken not in temples of marble, but in markets, in workshops, in fields. It passed from mother to child, woven into daily life. It survived even as the great cities declined, possibly due to climate change, shifting rivers, or internal collapse. When the Indo-Aryans arrived from the northwest, bringing with them chariots, Vedic hymns, and a new pantheon of gods, they encountered a land already ancient. They settled, mingled, and eventually dominated the north. But the south, rugged, forested, and culturally distinct, remained largely untouched. 
There, the descendants of the original builders, the speakers of Proto-Dravidian, preserved their legacy. To this day, echoes of that ancient world remain, in Tamil, one of the oldest living languages on earth. In temple rituals that predate Vedic traditions, in cultural motifs that stretch back not centuries, but millennia, the DNA told the story. But now, history could finally see the faces behind the ruins. The bones spoke, the genes remembered, and science listened. For generations, the story of the Dravidian people had been shrouded in myth, manipulated by politics and obscured by the limits of language. But now, with the revelation of ancient DNA, a new narrative has emerged, one grounded in evidence, not ideology. The Dravidians were not outsiders, not invaders, not remnants of some forgotten wave. They were builders, innovators, survivors, the living heirs of a civilization that once rivaled Egypt and Mesopotamia and perhaps even predated them. This discovery doesn't just rewrite Indian history, it reshapes the entire map of human migration. It suggests that long before borders, long before war, there were networks of culture and blood that stretched from the Persian plateau to the jungles of Tamil Nadu. It tells us that what we call ancient India was never isolated. It was a crossroads, a fusion point, a cradle. And the echoes of that ancient fusion still ring today in languages spoken by millions, in rituals performed under temple spires, and now in the very strands of DNA passed from generation to generation. This is more than a genetic breakthrough. It's a mirror held up to the past, revealing who we are and where we come from. But the journey doesn't end here. There are still ruins to uncover, scripts to decode, graves to open, and genomes waiting in silence for someone to listen. If you found this story as mind-blowing as we did, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to join us in exploring the hidden truths of our ancient world. Because sometimes, the smallest fragment, a bone, a seal, a strand of DNA, can shake the very foundation of history. And in the world of science, the past is never truly gone. It's just waiting to be found.